I'm a rock and roll rebel from head to toe. Ah, oh, that's a very old song. Have you ever said, I feel old, I feel tired, I feel sick, I feel bloated, I feel unenergetic, I feel lethargic, I don't feel 100%? Have you ever said that? And if the answer is yes, what have you done about it? And there's lots of solutions, of course, to not feeling very good. You could have a sleep, you could eat some food, you could drink some alcohol, you could gamble, you could go shopping, you could go and find a wow life experience. One of the really interesting things, and because I'm an old lady, I, I feel like I have the right to say this. If there is a solution to feeling, uh, if you don't feel 100%, the solution is simple, easy, fast. You could feel fantastic in, in a matter of seconds. Would you take that advice and feel fantastic? If there was a solution to being healthy, fit, strong, energetic for the rest of your life and it only took literally minutes a week, would you take that advice on board or would you at least try it? And this is my uh, perplexed face. <laughs> uh, as an exercise professional, I've been studying anatomy, physiology, exercise programming all of my life. I study the human body every day and I started exercising when I was 10 years of age and I have never missed a day and now I'm a very old lady. So I'm coming to you from a place where exercise, uh, being fit and strong, being healthy is the most important part of my life. It's my number one core value. I absolutely passionately believe that if you're healthy, fit and strong, you can do everything else. Uh, could you consider that as a possibility as a, if you want a career path or a business or you've got a hobby or a sport or a relationship or financial freedom? Could all of that be easier if you're fit and strong? I also understand as an exercise professional for over 40 years that there's a lot of controversial, contradicting information about how to get fit and strong. There's a lot of people talking stuff about how to train, how to exercise, how to eat, how often, how many times, what's good and bad. But if you live inside a body that you want to feel 100% energetic, perform at your best, look good, feel good all of the time, why would you rely on somebody else's advice? That's always a, a question that's perplexed me because I've always wanted to know for myself. And the reason for that is I used to believe other people. I used to trust the experts. And they gave me a lot of ridiculous, stupid, dumb information, but I trusted them because they had a university degree or they were a doctor or a physiotherapist or a chiropractor or a naturopath or whatever. I just believed them. And what I found out, and I'm not being disrespectful in any way, shape or form, because a lot of medical professionals and allied health professionals who are passionate about learning how the human body works, but it seems to be there's a lot of people who are not. And they give out advice that doesn't make any sense. It's not based on anatomy and physiology. And people believe them because they're an expert. So there's my first question. Because you've got a human body and because you have to live in it for the rest of your life, and if you want to feel good, do you want to learn how your human body works? Now, where this becomes really fascinating for me, and it's the only word I could use, because otherwise I'd probably cry, because after 40 plus years as an exercise professional, and particularly the last 20 to 25 years, where I've really been uh, the biggest advocate, evangelist, the most passionate person I've ever met about short, fast, simple, safe, easy exercise, it seems to me, and this is why I find it so perplexing, it seems that a lot of people don't want the answer to being fit and strong. Uh, people want the easy way, they want the diet, they want the pill, they want the drug, they want the something that's going to do it quickly for them. But when there is a quick solution, it seems that, that people don't want that answer. And I share that with you, I think you could probably hear the frustration in my voice. To get fit, you've got to get puffed. To get strong, you've got to overload your muscles and bones. And when you understand how the human body works, there are three energy systems that we move in, that we exercise in, that we live in. There's the phosphate system, which is the fight and flight, 10 second, get away from the threat. Your body produces all the energy that you need so that you can get away from a threat. So if you're under stress, if you're under threat, your body says increase heart rate, increase blood pressure, increase blood fat levels, increase everything that can get you away from the, th the threat stop or shut down everything that you don't need, put in 100% effort so you survive. That's the phosphate system and it's a 10 second system. The lactate system is still high energy, 
a high effort. It lasts from about 10 seconds to two minutes. And you, you use that, again, if you've got to run further away from the animal, if you didn't get away in the first 10 seconds, if you didn't kill the animal in the first 10 seconds, if you didn't overcome the threat or the challenge in that first 10 seconds, your body will then give you what you need to be able to get away. But that lactate system, which is 10 seconds to two minutes, that has a waste product called lactic acid. And it makes you feel sick and it makes your muscles burn. Now, you don't actually feel that when you're doing it if you're running away from a threat because your body also produces endorphins. Your hormonal system produces a thing called an endorphin, which is a painkiller. So it helps you get away from the threat and gives you the painkillers to be able to do it. The third energy system is the aerobic system, which is what we live in. It's breathe oxygen in, breathe carbon dioxide out, and we can live in that system where we do 24-7 all of our life, unless we are sprinting away or killing a threat, or we have to go for two minutes. The reason I've gone into a little bit of detail with that is if, if there's a system that allows you to get really fit and really strong in 10 seconds, because there is, it's called the phosphate system, your body has given you that system to overcome threat. And the beautiful thing about when you overcome the threat, your brain then fills up with all the happy drugs that make you feel good. So you have dopamine, which is a reward neurotransmitter. So you go, yay, I overcame the threat and you feel fantastic. You have serotonin, which is the satisfaction neurotransmitter. So you feel really satisfied to be alive. You feel really good. Uh, Brain-derived neurotropic factor is the fertilizer for all of those system systems so that next time if the threat's bigger or the animal's bigger or the wild tribe is larger and more ferocious or the threat from your business or your family or your relationship or your financial challenges is bigger, you've got a clearer, better brain to be able to deal with it. That all happens after you fight and flight. So you have, your body gives you everything you need to run away or to kill, fight, and then it makes you feel good and gives you a clear brain to think better for next time. I get really excited about that, which means the best place to exercise, the best place to lift something heavy, the best place to get puffed, and I'll say, share this again. If you want to get fit, you've got to get puffed. If you want to get strong, you've got to overload your muscles and bones. If you want to get the best result possible, if you want to get 100% fit and 100% strong, would you put in a 50% effort or even a 95% effort or would you like to put in 100% effort so you get 100% result? I always ask the question, big exercise, big result, little exercise, little result. To me, that's just common sense. And the reason I'm sharing that with you is if you exercise, if you do a high intense burst of activity for 10 seconds at 100% effort, in the phosphate system, you feel good straight afterwards. It's not just the benefit of being fit and strong. Your brain chemistry changes and you feel good. So how long have I been banging on about this for? I only did this as a very interesting exercise today. I thought, I wonder how long roe has been talking about 10 second bursts of activity. Because the number one killer of the human race is inactivity. And the number one excuse for not being active is it takes too long, I haven't got time. So because I have been bombarded with those two things all of my life, I looked for the shortest, quickest way for people to exercise, to get fit, to get strong, so they can stay that way for the rest of their life without using time as an excuse. Because I understood, having managed health clubs all over the world, this has been my career path all of my life. I've been doing this for more than 40 years. The biggest excuse for not exercising is time. So... If the further we get away from zero, because nine out of ten people would be would rather do no exercise at all. One out of ten people are happy to exercise. Nine out of ten, even if they are exercising, they don't want to. And most people don't want to. And the biggest excuse is time. So the further we get away from zero, the less likely people are to exercise. So for me, the whole study of the human body and anatomy and physiology and exercise programming has been what can I do to get the best result possible closest to zero so that the world wants to do it? Well, I don't think that 10 seconds is, uh, you can't get much closer to zero than 10 seconds. And I'll be, I'm going to pre-frame this with, people say to me every day, Rob, well, you can't be happy every day. How can you be an old lady and be so fit and strong? Here's the answer, because I do high bursts of intense activity for 10 seconds several times throughout the day and once maybe twice a week I will lift something very very heavy for about 10 seconds and if I can do it for more than 10 seconds I lift a heavier weight next time. That's how simple the exercise program is to be fit and strong and just as another side note this is about one tenth of my garden 
Uh, I've got a very large garden filled with very heavy rocks, with gravel, with sand, with very big logs. And I've moved every single one of them myself. And I'm a very old lady. I'm capable of lifting really heavy things. For a very long time, I lift rocks and logs and gravel and wheelbarrows full of sand. And I can do that all day long because I'm fit and because I'm strong. The other thing I always get accused of is being happy every day. Rowell, well, you can't be happy every day. Well, my answer is always, what if you could be? And if you could be, how would you be? And if you exercise intensely for 10 seconds at 100% effort, your brain chemistry changes and you actually can't be unhappy. So that's how simple it is. Get fit, sorry, get puffed to get fit, lift heavy to get strong, do it in the phosphate system, which is 10 seconds, and your whole body, brain, physical chemistry, brain chemistry, metabolism, self-esteem, immune system, digestive system will change and you'll be a healthy, strong human being. So I've been banging on about that now for about 10 years. Probably longer, but very intensely, 10 second bursts of high intense activity. I've been banging on about it, preaching about it, enthusiastic about it, passionate about it for more than 10 years. And I actually share this information every day. And people tell me, I want to be fit, I want to be strong, I want to be lean, I want to lose weight, I want to be healthy, I want to fit into my clothes, I want bigger muscles, I want to have a better life. And they're not prepared to put in 10 seconds of high intense activity. Because when I ask, have you been doing your 10 second sprints? Have you been doing your 10 second lifts? Have you been energizing your body and changing your brain chemistry, which takes 10 seconds? I don't ask anymore because the, the facial expression says it all. People are embarrassed or they come up with excuses. You know when somebody says, well, that means there's a story coming afterwards, an excuse for why I'm not exercising for 10 seconds. It's not even exercise. 10 seconds, you can't even call that exercise. It's just a high intense burst of energy that you put into your own body so that you can think more clearly, so that you can be fit, strong, lean, have a fast metabolism, have high self-esteem, fight germs, bugs, viruses and diseases. When you lift heavy things at high intensity, your bones and muscles get strong. Your immune system's built inside your bones. So if you're the person that's constantly getting sick and runny nose and flu and going to the doctor and taking drugs, my question is, or used to be, because I don't ask anymore, if you lift something heavy, you get strong bones because muscles pull on your bones to get strong bones. If you've got strong bones, your immune system's built inside your bones. So even if if you do get sick, you'll get you'll get better quicker, and because you've got a strong immune system, both your innate immune system and your the, and the one that you're born with, and your adaptive immune system, the one that adapts to every new germ, bug, virus, and disease, they will get stronger. So you are less likely to ever get sick again from that same thing. But is it possible? And this is where it becomes very sad. Is it possible that there's a benefit to being sick, being depressed? constantly having the flu, constantly needing a sick day, constantly feeling bad. And the reason I ask that question is the psychologist and psychiatrist will share with me that the answer is yes. If there is a solution to a challenge, and it's a simple, fast, safe solution, 10 seconds of high intense activity is very simple, very safe and very effective, but people don't want to take that solution, the answer that the psychologist and psychiatrist share with me is that there is more benefit to that person to be sick, to be depressed, to be overweight, to be miserable, than they're getting a benefit from that. So they're getting sympathy or they're getting attention or somebody, there's some, there's some benefit. Because if the, if the solution is so simple and people don't take the solution, it means that they don't want to because there's more pleasure in being sick or depressed or, or upset than there is to be healthy, fit and strong. Well, people can live however they want to and that's where I am as an old lady. Actually, now I can't afford to care because there's more than 7 billion people in the world and most of them don't want to be healthy, fit and strong, obviously. What I am asking for is our kids though. I don't want our kids growing up thinking that it's normal to be depressed and angry and upset and overweight and sick and diseased and, and have to take drugs. I don't want our kids to think that. And if our kids know, and that's why I'm here every day, because people say, Rowie, you bang on about the same stuff every day and nobody seems to listen. Exactly. But maybe one child will get the information and one child will then perhaps, I don't know, become the, the president of a country or the, the head of a, a health organisation or want to change the world. Now, my ability to change the world, I'm here every day and I just keep sending the information out there. 
because the solution to being healthy, fit and strong is not going to the gym for hours and hours. It's not running for hours and hours. It's not doing weight training three sets of 10, five days a week for hours and hours. If you want to be fit, you've got to get puffed. If you want to be strong, you've got to overload your muscles and bones at 100% effort. And the only 100% effort system in your body is the phosphate system, and that lasts for 10 seconds. So if you are doing something that takes longer than 10 seconds, you are decreasing the benefit because at 100% effort, you get 100% result. If you put in 90% effort, you'll only get a 90% result. And if you go for a plod jog or a walk or you lift light weights, you're now working at 45, 50, 30, a tiny percentage of what you're actually capable of, which means you're not going to get the results that you want. And maybe that then gives you an excuse. Oh, I've tried exercise and it didn't work or I tried eating healthy and it didn't work. And I think a lot of people do use that as an excuse. Oh, I tried it and it doesn't work. And I'll give you a very sad story about that. I had a family in my life, I used to travel to America five, six times a year. And everybody in that family were what we would call normal size. They were, the women were a size eight to 10 and, and lean, I was, I'll, I'll say lean. Uh, obviously there are some countries in the world where uh, highly processed uh, food with large amounts of calories in it and super size me has become very popular and America is one of those countries. So this family got progressively overweight. Uh, one of the daughters had a baby and that baby was born, I think she was six or seven pounds normal weight. And when the mother got married, she was normal weight. When grandmother got married, she was normal weight, size 10, size eight, tiny little girls. That whole family was now overweight and a couple of them obese. The little girl was born normal weight. But she was fed large amounts of takeaway food from the day she was born. There was Coke put into her, her drinking bottle when she was a baby. Uh, we went out to take away food meal with them at one time and that little girl, as soon as she could speak, she ordered a large burger, a large fries and a large Coke. And if you've ever been to the country where large is not, it's more like a, sw a swimming pool. It's a, that's, and this little girl was ordering that on her own. I'm sharing this with you because it broke my heart, of course. This little girl became morbidly obese. She was at the age of six, she was 100 pounds. So that's a very big child and she couldn't walk up a flight of stairs. When that little girl was taken to the doctor and she was taken to the doctor many times, because obviously she wasn't just overweight, she had all sorts of medical challenges as well. The, the result or the answer that her mother gave me, I said, what are we gonna do about this gorgeous little girl? She's very unhealthy. And her mum said, yeah, but every doctor tells me a different story. Every doc doctor makes, one tells me to be a vegan vegetarian, one tells me to be a carnivore, one tells me to cut out carbs, one tells me to eat more carbs. It's all too confusing. I can't be bothered. Let her eat whatever she bloody well wants. She probably didn't say that because that's not an American thing to say. But a lot of people have just given up. It's, there's too much contradiction, contradicting, controversial information, so I can't be bothered with any of it. So I'm just going to do whatever I want. And of course you can do that. But I think that's very unfair to that little girl. And I'm not a mother, so I've got to be very careful. But I have four puppy dogs. And one of my puppy dogs, uh, her life began uh, by somebody abusing her terribly, not feeding her, not giving her water, keeping her tied to a tree. And when she came to us, she was very, very skinny. And now she has an obsession with food. And that's understandable. So I'm very careful about my little girl not eating too much food. She will eat everything. And when we take her out, she eats rabbits and possums and, and dead carcasses of any animal she can find. And she tries to vacuum up everybody or the other three dogs' food. And she, whenever if she gets into a cupboard, she'll eat everything. But I'm very careful because I don't want my dog to be overweight because overweight dogs are unhealthy. I love my puppy dog and I want to make sure that she's healthy, fit and strong for as long as she's alive. I do hope that if you're a parent, a teacher, a coach, a boss or a leader that you have that same headspace and that you would want to give the people in your life the safest, shortest exercise program and the healthiest eating plan possible to make sure they've got a healthy head and a healthy body to live their life to the max. So I always ask this question. Whatever you're doing, surely it should be this simple. Get puffed to get fit, lift heavy to get strong, make sure that it's safe so that you don't get injured and make sure that it's short so you don't get bored. So you've got a healthy, fit, strong body for the rest of your life. 
And if you want to be sick and if you want to be depressed and if you want to be overweight, even though the, the solution is that simple, please don't pass that on to our kids. Now, that might not be you personally, but please, could you be the living, breathing example of healthy, fit and strong so our kids know that they can be healthy, fit and strong too? Because I would love everybody to live their life to the Max, so you can sing every day. I feel good, na 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 na. I knew that I would now. So good, yeah, yeah, so good. Look at all these rocks I've moved. Woohoo! Healthy, fit, strong old lady, I love it. Ha <laughs> ha.